Hello, in this video presentation we're going to take a look at how the domain name system or DNS works. So first let's discuss what the purpose of DNS is. DNS is primarily used for host name resolution, which means you want to take host records and map them to IP addresses. The reason is because it's a lot easier for us to remember friendly host names than IP addresses. For instance, if you wanted to visit uh, Google's web page, rather than typing in the IP address in the browser, you type in the friendly name. DNS is not a centralized solution, it's actually highly distributed. If you take the example of a simple host name such as www.google.com, information on how to resolve that name is actually stored on multiple DNS servers throughout the hierarchy. Let's take a look at this example in more detail. The resolver, which is your DNS client, when attempting to resolve the record www.google.com, your client will send the request to a DNS server, either internally on your network or an external DNS server on the internet. In most cases, it's either an internal DNS server on the corporate network or the ISP's DNS server. Step one, the client sends a query to the DNS server. The DNS server that receives this query may have the information already stored in cache. If it does, it'll just simply respond back to the resolver with the information. However, if it doesn't have the information stored in cache, the DNS server must go out and find out that information. Since the ISP DNS server doesn't really have any information about where to resolve the host name www.google.com, it will send the query to the root DNS server. The root DNS server actually doesn't have specific information with regard to www.google.com, but it does know where the .com servers are. Therefore, in step 3, it will send back information about where to find the .com servers. The ISP DNS server in step 4 will send the same query to the .com DNS server. The .com DNS server doesn't have information about the record www, but it does have information about where to find google.com. Therefore, in step 5, it will send back information about where to find google.com back to the ISP DNS server. The ISP DNS server will then take this information that it received from the top level DNS server .com and send the query to the DNS server for google.com asking how to resolve the www record. Since at this point, your ISP's DNS server has reached the DNS server that hosts the google.com zone, that second level DNS server can then respond with an authoritative answer on the mapping for www. It returns this result in step 7. Now that the ISP's DNS server has information about www.google.com, it will cache this information in its memory for future requests and it will respond back to the resolver with the answer to its query. Now that the resolver has the hostname to IP mapping, it can go ahead and communicate directly with the web server that resolves to www.google.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a live example. I have a Windows 2003 server that's running DNS, and it's configured to use root hints. In this example, we're going to be using NSLOOKUP to query our DNS server. While we're querying the DNS server, we're going to be running a network packet capture, so we can see what's actually happening on the network. Let's go ahead and start the packet capture. I'll open the command prompt. Let's type NSLOOKUP, and let's resolve www.itgeared.com. We got our result. Let's go back to the network packet capture. And it does appear that we've captured some packets, so let's take a look at them in more detail. The first packet source is our DNS server. The destination is one of the root DNS servers, c.root-servers.net. We sent a query for www.itgear.com. The root server responded back to our server with some results. Let's take a look at those results. If I look at the DNS area of the payload, we can see here that the root server has sent us a referral, and it's sending us information about top-level domain DNS servers. The next packet in the list is coming from our DNS server, and it's accessing one of those top-level DNS servers, in this case, g.gtld-servers.net. In this case, we're making the same type of request, a query for www.itgear.com. Of course, this server doesn't have the information for www, but it does have information regarding itgear.com, so we're getting a response back from that server. And again, if we look inside of the DNS part of the payload, we can see that the top-level server is sending us a referral to ns49.domaincontrol.com, and ns50.domaincontrol.com. These are second-level DNS servers. Our server on the next packet is actually sending the same query to ns50.domaincontrol.com for www.itgear.com. ns50.domaincontrol.com has sent us a response back. And in this case, that server is authoritative for the zone, so we got our answer back. And the answer was 184.168.250.1. So as you can see, name resolution goes through a delegated process. DNS servers, in general, do the best they can to resolve host names. If a DNS server is unable to resolve a host name based on its zone information or what's in its cache, it will try to send back a referral. Well, that completes our tutorial on how the domain name system name resolution process works. Thank you for watching.